Hello and welcome to Pitch RE2, day two of the Rosenbach HSBC National School Sevens. We are on under 18 VARS duty today, as well as the inaugural under 15 girls competition. Here on RE2, we're kicking off with Basileg v. He's got E. Priscelli, an all Welsh clash to kick things off here on RE2. Throughout the day, it's all going to be about the uh, the group stages in this under-18 VARS competition here on RE2. Plenty of games to work our way through. And then at 3.40pm and 4pm, we've got two of the elimination round games in this VARS competition here on RE2. That elimination round is for all of the group winners from today's under-18 VARS groups. Winners in the elimination round go through to the VARS quarterfinals, losers to the bowl quarterfinals. And away very early. It's a beautiful score. Prizelli with the opening score there, playing from left to right on your screens. A fantastic early try for them to take a 5-0 lead on this opening game of the day. By the way, we finish up today's action here on RE2 at 4.20 p.m. with the under 15 girls plate final. Over on RE1, they'll have the cup final, but here on RE2, it'll be the plate. The first ever under 15 girls competition. Supposed to happen in 2020, but two years of canceled tournaments has left them without a tournament. But they're finally here. And they are very excited. I had a bit of breakfast with some of the coaches this morning and they are very, very excited for the girls to get out there. The boys, well, they've all been here before. This is familiar territory and Prizelli have kicked off following that early try. And they have got some big physical units in that team. Basilek, though, in possession. Shipping it from left to right. Basileg in those yellow and blue hoops for those of you unfamiliar with them. Good ruck speed. They're getting drawn into contact though. There are some big, big men here and it's a big, big piece of contact there from the Basileg big man. Stabbed through by Prizelli. But we'll come back for the knock on. It's a busy morning here on RE2. Up next, 10.20 a.m., Seaford College against Wisbeach Grammar, followed by Bradford Grammar against College of Richard Collier, and then Shiplake College against Wellington College. That's Wellington College's second, second seven. First seven are over in the cup. And that's just the first hour of the day here. Prizelli on the attack, but the ball's loose. Hounded by the Basileg defence. Some good commentary guests coming along later today. Ealing trail finders, big presence here. They're going to have a chat with us later. Sam Howard working with St. Benedict's nowadays. Three-time school's cup winning coach with Dulwich College. And here... Looking to make their mark in the Vars are Prizelli. Two tries to the good early on. Day two of five here at the Rosslyn Park HSBC National School Sevens. Yesterday, in glorious sunshine, 
We had the juniors and the under 11s and that sunshine has continued and what a pleasure it is to be out here in the sun. There's nothing quite like the Rosslyn Park 7s in the sun. Prezelli, kick deep. The chase is big. Some huge units. I've said it before, but I'll say it again. Basileg do well to try and avoid those big units, but they spill it in contact, and it gives Prezelli a chance for their third score in trying to evade those big men. Basileg gave up the ball. Allowing Prezelli the chance for their third score of the game. What a start it's been from this Welsh side. Situated in Group A, these two. Hard to describe exactly how wonderful these conditions are. Best I can give you is I've got a thick layer of sun cream on. I'll be reapplying very soon. Other teams in this group, by the way, Emmanuel from just down the road in Clapham and Bromsgrove School, the holders of the under 18 Vars here at Rosslyn Park. Holders of every competition reside in Group A. So it's a competitive group this and early on it's looking like Prezelli are going to be the side that really challenge the champions. Three tries to the good here, putting some relentless pressure on. <laughs> Half time very shortly. About a minute away now. Basileg with the put into the scrum. A try here would really change the context of the game for them. Prezelli though, turn the ball over and they're across the line for their fourth try of the game. And I think there will be time for them to kick off. It's been a storming start from the Welshman. And their purple kit. Conversion made. We don't have time for the kickoff. That's half time. Prezelli, four tries to the good against Basileg. What a first half from Prezelli. A brilliant, brilliant beginning to their Group A campaign. Been a brilliant, brilliant start to the day here. And there are 192 teams taking part in this vast competition. 192, and it's all going to be whittled down to one by the close of play tomorrow. Just to be clear on the structure of the tournament for the under-18 VARs, we have the group stages today, followed by late this afternoon, the elimination rounds, which we mentioned earlier pits the group winners against each other. Winners of those elimination game round games go through to tomorrow's second group stages after which there's quarterfinals, semi-finals and the VARs final. The losers of today's elimination round game go through to tomorrow's bowl. Second groups following which we'll have quarterfinals, semi-finals and a final. So it's two full days of competition in the under-18 Vars. And we'll have the schedule published for you as soon as we possibly can after the day's play. As Prezelli were looking to get on the attack again, but they've knocked it forward. So it's a basileg leg chance. Four tries up, Prezelli. Can Basileg leg get themselves on the score sheet? in this second half. Yeah. 
Some big games to look out for today, or some big teams here on RE2 to look out for. Seaford College next up. Brilliant, brilliant performances in both 10s and 7s this year. Doing well at their own 10s tournament earlier this season. And then at the Surrey 7s, performing really well a couple of weeks back in what was their first 7s tournament of the season. Prizelli, though, performing well here. The big trundling truck up the midfield and they've released the gas man on the wide channel. Steps back inside. Oh, well hauled down. Fantastically well hauled down, but manages to get the offload off the deck. And again, another tackle. Takes the man into touch and that is... Oh, he's not quite taking him into touch. In fact, we'll keep playing. Brilliant scramble from Basileg, though. Prizelli charging through in the middle with the big man. Almost impossible to bring him down. They get him down eventually, but it's over the try line and it's a fifth try of the morning for Prizelli. What a start in Group A. A tough outing in this first game for Basileg, but they'll be back on the live stream on RE2 at 12 p.m. when they take on the reigning champions, Bromsgrove. They're going to have a big say yet in this group. You do get the feeling, though, that the key game in this group, based on the evidence so far, is going to be Bromsgrove against Prizelli. That feels like where the action is going to be. Tricky one for Basileg there, the high hanging kickoff, lost in the sun, bounces off into touch. The sun right in the eyes of the player trying to receive that one. Good line out from Basileg. Finding a bit of space for first time all game. They've got a chance to have a run and they side through. On the attack, can they get quick ball? Quick enough. They go the way that's a bit clogged up though, so they have to charge through the middle again. Honey potting around the ball a little bit. And Prizelli get the turnover. And they go quickly. With the gas man out wide and nobody, nobody is catching him. Superb pace, superb reaction to the penalty from Prizelli. They moved it wide, found the space and scored a sixth try of the game. Basileg had a chance but when the ball went into contact, too many players went chasing after it, which meant when the penalty came, Prizelli had the width of the pitch available to them and boy did they take it. Prizelli then, six tries to the good. What a start it has been. Spilled by Basileg. So Prizelli will have the put into the scrum. And an opportunity with about a minute left to play. Maybe two if we're lucky. An opportunity to look for a seventh try of this game. What a performance so far. Prizelli put the ball in. Get it away nicely. Now they look to get on the attack. Their fly half showing deft footwork. Has to take it into contact though. Rather ran out of players to pass it to. And now they're just playing tight through the middle. 
And why not? The size they have available to them is truly outstanding. Here they go. Ball to the line again. Playing almost like 15s here are Prezelli in these closing moments of the game. Simple hands may well do it as the gas man gets the ball again and gets across for his second try of the game. His second, his side's eighth. Four tries in either half. Stunning performance from Pizzelli. As warming up next to us, our Wisbeach Grammar, as they prepare to take on Seaford College. Thirty seconds to play, I've just heard the ref say. Thirty seconds to play. Anything could happen. Brazilian will kick off. Brilliant, brilliant start from them. Hoisted. High. Basileg take this one though, cleanly. Get the offload away. Can they get one one try on the score sheet to finish the game off on a high? They attempt the ambitious offload. Keep the ball alive though. Offload it off the deck again. Into contact they go. They're determined to finish with a score and they've got the overlap. Now it's just a straight race for the corner. Can Basileg get one back? They can indeed, and what a way to finish. It's been a tough, tough opening game. But in the final possession, they show what they can do. And as they head into games against Emmanuel and Bromsgrove, they have every reason to feel they can build from this finish. Prezelli, though, have been utterly outstanding. A terrific terrific performance eight tries and a storming victory to kick the tournament off here on re2 in the under 18 vars at the rossin park hsbc national school sevens a brilliant victory then from Prezelli. absolutely outstanding superb superb play the players shaking hands. And next up, we're going to have Seaford College against Wisbeach Grammar. Seaford College, a potential dark horse in this Vars competition. Wisbeach Grammar with sides in just about every aspect of the competition. I think they've got girls' sides, junior sides, the lot. About three minutes away from kickoff in that one. So I'll be back on the mic with you any moment now.
في حيز علي فيك زاري So, here on RE2, a slight delay while we waited for Wisbeach Grammar School. They have come all the way from North Norfolk, I suppose. Cambridgeshire, perhaps, actually. The Fens, either way. They're here now, though. Seaford College are ready to go on the left-hand side of your picture. Wisbeach Grammar School on the right-hand side in their hoops reminiscent of Richmond Rugby Club or indeed for those of you in Scotland Greenock Wanderers also play in those famous red yellow and black hoops left hand side Seaford College in their blue and white hoops short of their talisman at the moment Johnny Green he was playing for Wales under 18 over the weekend but no shortage of talent in this Seaford College side. Couple of players to really keep an eye on. Henry Boyle closest to us on the far side of your screen. Legs strapped up. They're open side, jealous. Absolute stunner. Catches the ball, shows his determination, but he's driven into touch. Seaford College, as we say, among those that we're expecting to be a dark horse in this competition. Wisbeach Grammar had the ball but knocked it on. So it'll be a chance for Seaford to get things moving. Running about a minute behind schedule on this pitch after a slight delay. But we'll be off. We are indeed off very soon. Put into the scrum. Perhaps not. Referee not quite happy with things. Ball's in now. Seafood, get it away. And it's a darting, sniping run. Terrific play from their scrum half. And now they look to ship the ball wide. Step inside. And it's an early try from Seaford College. And it's a brilliant, brilliant bit of play. Darting off the, off the scrum. And then working the ball the other way. And with the Wisbeach defence backpedalling. All it took was a step inside. Seaford to kick off. One try to the good. Boyle hoists it high. What a kick off that is. Could go anywhere. Bouncing this way and that. Gathered in the end by Wisbeach. Who will look to attack. Determined to get the ball from one coast to the other. Goes loose. But they do regather. Contest at the breakdown is fierce and it's turned over by Seaford College who are going to get away for their second try and it is that man, the scrum half, darting through. Clinical, clinical play from Seaford College. You can almost see the smile from head coach Sean Thompson on the far side of the pitch. Terrific work, put their opposition under so much pressure. Achieved the turnover as a result of that pressure at the breakdown. And then the gaps appeared. Boyle, again this time, hoists it high, same direction. Again, it's so tricky to take. Again though, Wisbeach Grammar just about get on top of it. And look to ship it wide. 
pass just goes to hand. They come back down this short side. A really strong physical carry. Doing well to hold on to possession, but the Seaford College defence holds firm. And now they get their man. Snaffle him. They'll compete hard at the breakdown. Cleared out well, though. Good little spell, this, from Wisbeach. Keeping the ball alive really well. Starting to look a little more confident. As I say that, the ball spills. But it goes backwards. They keep it alive still. A good spell of possession, this. From Wisbeach. Playing some good sevens now. Not taking it into contact. Bit more patience. That's what we like to see. Now they take it in in the wide channel. And they get the penalty. A good spell of possession that for Wisbeach Grammar. And eventually, Seaford's enthusiasm gets the better of them. And they give away the penalty. Beach with the line out. Not too straight. Referee agrees. We'll come back in field for a scrum. Seaford scrum. Up next, by the way, it's Bradford Grammar School against the College of Richard Collier. Bradford going through a really intense warm-up to my right-hand side as Seaford College streak away for their third try of the game. It's been a fantastic performance so far from Seaford College. Three tries to the good. It's a Group C game, by the way. And uh, these two are joined in Group C, when I pull up my notes, by Brinted Comprehensive and St Paul's. Welsh schools have been really good on the circuit this year, so keep an eye on Brinted. St Paul's have good history in this competition as well as Wisbeach Grammar School, just knock that ball on into touch. Seaford College, though, probably the most fancied side in this group. But we'll see what happens with those two other teams. At the moment, Seaford three tries to the good here against Wisbeach Grammar School with a put into this scrum. Up next, by, by the way, that Bradford Grammar School against College of Richard Collier game is a Group E game. Marlborough College and Christ College Brecon, the other two teams in that group. That is... An absolute stunner of a group. And that's an absolute stunner of a try from Seaford College. They're fourth of the game. These boys are on fire. And now Sean Thompson rings the changes. Four tries up. Still in the first half. Time to give a few boys a rest. But yeah, that group E, Bradford Grammar School and College of Richard Collier, that should be a decent game. Bradford Grammar School, really good sevens pedigree. But I'll tell you what, Christ College Brecon and Marlborough College, those are two teams that could each go very, very far in this competition. Christ College Brecon have been outstanding all season, going to the final of the Seaford Tens, doing brilliantly well at their own Christ College Sevens. And then we saw them winning the title at the Colston Sevens. Marlborough College have been superb as well. Byron Lloyd Gilmore playing the pivot role has been utterly outstanding. So if you get the chance, do check out 
some of the Marlborough College play in that game is going to be an absolute cracker. Half time here though. Seaford College four tries up against Wisbeach Grammar School. And we've already seen here on RE2 in these first two games two really dominant performances, haven't we? Prezelli scoring eight tries in that first game against Basileg. And Wisbeach, uh, Seaford College rather, halfway there in this game against Wisbeach Grammar School. And just to give you an idea of what the next hour or so looks like, 10.40 a.m. Bradford, Bradford Grammar School against College of Richard Collier, as we've said. At 11 a.m. Shiplake College against Wellington College. 11.20, Sir Joseph Williamson's against Stowe. Look out for Stowe. Stowe are a very, very good team. 11.40 a.m. Birkenhead against Canford. And at 12 p.m. we're sort of back round to the to the top of the top of the order where Basileg will be on the field for the second time, taking on the reigning champions from back in 2019. How bizarre is it that the reigning champions were back in 2019? And that's Bromsgrove. Basileg v Bromsgrove at 12. 12.20, Bradford Grammar School get their second go on the live stream here on RE2. They'll be up against Marlborough College, featuring, of course, as we said, Byron Lloyd Gilmore. 12.40 p.m., Cheltenham College against Radley College. That should be a cracker. 1 p.m., Wellington College back for their second game against Kimrimney. And then after lunch, we'll start moving into a few more of these group games. Wisbeach Grammar then, as we're back underway in this second half. Probing, looking for their first score of the game. And making good ground as well as they get around the outside. Straight race for pace. Oh, what a covering tackle from Seaford College. Could have been forgiven four tries up for taking their foot off the gas. But no such thoughts. From the men from the southeast. I'll tell you what, in the next game, Bradford Grammar against uh, College of Richard Collier, if Bradford Grammar School do not start fast, I will be amazed. They are going through one hell of a warm-up and one hell of a break it is again from Seaford College. Their fifth try of the game, a second for the young scrum half, who was such a revelation at the Seaford 10s right at the start of this term and what a revelation he's proving here on the sevens field as well five tries for Seaford College they are running rampant and I think we now have an entirely different seven to the one that started in this opening game for these two sides. Spilled at the kickoff from Wisbeach. Seaford get away. Looking for a sixth. Bundled well into touch. Wisbeach Grammar School not showing any signs of giving up. Determination to the last there. That's what it's all about. Those moments are the moments that lift you. And with two more games to come in this group. Those moments are the sort that can see you through those next two games and lead you on to something special. Seaford though, toying with the line out. Now, I don't know if you can see on your cameras, it's a sort of sea of rugby pitches all across us as we look off to that far left-hand side and behind that tree line in the distance, there are as many pitches again. That's the sort of scale we're talking about here at the Rosslyn Park Sevens. I believe it's something like 24 pitches that are in play across the various areas. Off to our right, pitch RE1, the sort of main hub. And on the far side of that as well, there are yet more pitches. It's quite an extraordinary feat of logistics as much as anything else. Where's Beach Grammar? Well, we saw Basileg on the end of a... A tough result, managing to finish with a flourish and get a try. Can Wisbeach? Well, maybe they can. Maybe they can repeat the trick because it's a straight shootout for pace. 
and they are going to win the race and Wisbeach Grammar School are going to score their first try of the game. And after all their efforts, you can't say they don't deserve it. Five tries down, maybe, but they bounce back with one of their own. Superb base, superb patience, and a just reward for sticking at it against a top, top Seaford College side. So it'll be Wisbeach Grammar School to kick off. By my reckoning, we've got about four minutes left to play, maybe three. Seaford. Oh, they're going to return it in style. It's just going to be about, do they have the pace to get to the line? I think they're going to. Yes, they are. Well, that's how you respond. If there were any concerns that Seaford might just have got a bit too confident having gone five tries up. Conceding that score, not a bit of it. They respond in perfect fashion with a try of their own. They're sixth of the game. They're six tries to one to the good. A performance and a half from Seaford College. Wisbeach, still trying, still working. Ball spilled in contact though and it's turned over again. Seaford will have another go. They've created another overlap and they're gonna cross the line again for a seventh. They are just oh so clinical. Every time they found themselves with a hint of an opportunity, they've taken it. Brilliant work from Seaford College. Will Bowley, I think it was, with the score. Fantastic player, new to Seaford College in sit form. And he has been an utter revelation for them. With Speech Grammar School. Still going, still working hard. Oh, so determined, though. From Seaford's open side, one of their best players on the circuit this year. And now they counter into the 22. They go fast ball. Penalty advantage. It was fast ball that was then slowed illegally. But still, they have the numbers. And still, they go charging to the corner. And Bowley is going to be through for what I think is his hat trick. Oh, it's just so impressive. Eight tries. At least three for Bowley. Well, I said they might be dark horses. Perhaps we need to elevate them. And that is... The full-time whistle finishes up. Seaford College winning against w Wisbeach Grammar School. Eight tries to one. Seaford College, an absolutely fantastic start to this competition. And it's going to be a very quick turnover because we're already at 10.40. Next up is going to be Bradford Grammar School against the College of Richard Collier. We're going to be without commentary for the first seven minutes or so of that game. But we'll be back with you in the second half with comms. Don't worry, though, there'll be pictures throughout. Should be a cracker of a game. On the right-hand side, by the looks of things, you're going to have the College of Richard Collier playing in blue and gold hoops. Bradford Grammar School are going to be in their resplendent purple. 
They're the teams to look out for. Should be a fantastic game. We'll be back with you very shortly, but the pictures are going to be staying with you. We'll be talking to you very soon. I'm back with you sooner than I thought and the reason is because I was told I would be having a team sheet for the College of Richard Collier and guess what? We have one. So, just to run through the squad. Josh Hedger, number 10. Owen O'Donoghue, number 1. Matt Bates, 17. Ellis Benson, 9. Harvey Brock, 13. Harrison White, 20. Archie Benson, 12. Ollie Cape, I think that is, in 15. Conan Laws, 22. Lewis Jones, 5. George Gregg, I think it is, 21. And Che Sorarini, I believe, in number 11. A team sheet. What a thing of beauty. It's Richard Collier that are in possession. Taking on Bradford Grammar School on the left-hand side of your screens. Richard Collier on the right-hand side. Taking it into contact. A real physical contest. And it's a penalty for Bradford Grammar School. This referee, by the way, once refereed me in a game down at Guildford RFC. I was playing for Ross and Park Hatters at the time. And he allowed me to get away with uh, a fair few infringements at the breakdown. As a result of a handshake at the start of the game. Bradford Grammar School, though, requiring no such help. As they cross the line for their first try of the game. I should say, in case anyone thinks I'm besmirching the re reputation of the referee. He told us what he wanted from us at the breakdown and I just listened. Always the key, listen to what the referee tells you. Bradford Grammar School certainly doing that, turning the ball over, getting away for a quick first try of the game. The famous school from Yorkshire. One of the earliest winners of the school's cup. Charlie Hodgson among their alumni. So too Dan Scarborough, former England fullback, who's now head coach at Bradford Grammar School. And what a hit that was off the kickoff, but Richard Collier are on the attack. And looking to make some headway, working hard. Oh, what a delicious offload. And then the stab through, it's a race for pace, but the ball beats everyone and drifts out into touch. Richard Collier, get the ball back. It's a really good contest, this one. The first two games here on RE2 today, we've seen some brilliant performances, but they've been fairly one-way traffic. This one, though, already looking like it's going to be a cracking contest. 
Richard Collier, stab it through. Owen O'Donoghue, that was, stabbing it through. Regathers his kick just about. Yes, he does. Just throws the man aside. Quick tap on. Oh, the drift is good from Bradford Grammar, though. Richard Collier desperately, desperately working the ball wide. It is wide now to Archie Benson. Benson crosses the line. Oh, they worked so, so hard for that. Bradford Grammar with brilliant scramble defence, but Richard Collier somehow, some way, keeping the ball alive and getting the ball out to Benson. And Benson scoring the try. Converted by Harvey Brock. The fly half in the scrum cap. Oh, that was wonderful play from both sides. Bradford Grammar School doing well to hold them out for so long. Richard Collier, it's a high hanging kickoff, but it's straight into touch. As Dan Scarborough goes scurrying off into the thicket to get the ball back. Keen, keen to keep the pace of this game alive, I would say, is the former Leeds Tyke fullback. I haven't the heart to tell him that I was a season ticket holder as a student up in Leeds while he was playing for the Leeds Tykes. His side playing with real intensity though, and they've got a penalty. That season ticket, by the way, as a student, 12 quid for the year as Bradford Grammar School break through. For their second try of the game, they regain the lead. A really good response to conceding the try from Bradford Grammar School. Fantastic work. And they'll take the conversion from behind the pitch. Nicely done. The sun is absolutely beating down here. Absolutely fantastic. Our cameraman Samir up above me, enjoying sunshine on a rugby game for possibly the first time ever. Poor man is usually up in the gods, in the rain and the cold, but today he's in the sunshine and the sunshine is allowing these players on the field to show us all their skills. And Bradford Grammar are running through the repertoire at the moment. They take it into contact now, though. And Richard Collier, well, I thought they turned it over, but they haven't quite. So Bradford remain in possession, but they're looking, looking for a place to go. Now they find it. Oh, half a break. Oh, just spilled. Oh, they train wonderful patience, but not quite getting the ball to hand. It's half time. Bradford Grammar School leading Richard Collier, two tries to one. A brilliant half of rugby so far. One of the best contests we've had on the pitch so far today. This Group E fixture. What a group this is likely to be. These two playing some brilliant rugby. And alongside them in the group, as mentioned before, Christ College Brecon and Marlborough College, two fantastic teams. This group is loaded. All going very nicely in the sun here on RE2. I see, see my cameraman Samir smiling down at me. He's happy, I'm happy. The people on the touchline are happy. Right. 
There's an ice cream van in the far corner. I think we know what's going to be happening later. I'll be paying that a visit. Archie Benson with the try for Richard Collier. Sandwiched between two tries for Bradford Grammar School, who lead this one as we're just about to start the second half. Two tries to one. Cracking game so far. Next up, by the way, Ship Lake College against Wellington College. That's due to start at 11 a.m. And at the moment, we are on schedule. Bradford Grammett. Spill it in contact, so Richard Collier. Try scorer Benson has the ball, takes it to ground. But he's turned over, so we'll come back for the scrum. Put in Collier then. Really hard working scrum from Bradford Grammar. But the ball, the scrum wheels 90, I think, there. Referee will set things up again. Collier, go from the base. Taking the ball into contact now, they get the pass away. Ambitious offload out the back. Means a turnover for Bradford Grammar School. But it is turned over, I think, superbly well by Richard Collier. Oh, that is superb power. Stunning work. They get the penalty as a result, and they're going to go quickly. Why not? It's sevens. Taking the ball on. Oh, and it's darting around the side from Ellis Benyon. Bainan, rather. Apologies. News through, by the way, that RGS Newcastle have had a stunning start to this Vars competition. A 46-0 victory against Colleg Gwent to open their account. That is outstanding from RGS Newcastle. We are not going to be seeing a scoreline like that on RE2 in this game, I can tell you, though. A really, really even contest between Richard Collier on the left-hand side of your screens and Bradford Grammar School on the right. Two tries apiece on an absolute knife edge this game. Hoisted high from the kickoff by Richard Collier, but it's well dealt with by Bradford Grammar School. Who are in contact, but once again, Collier on the ball like a limpet, but this time they're cleared out. Bradford Grammar probing. They need a third try. And they're making every effort to get there. Working hard, keeping the ball alive. Probing, looking for space. They come back again against the grain. And again the other way. A double switch, and it's worked brilliantly. They're through the gap. The legs are absolutely like jelly, though. Wobbling this way and that. But he fends off the defender and Bradford Grammar School. Oh, I thought he'd been hauled down, but Bradford Grammar School get their third try of the game. Third try of the game. Fantastic work from Bradford Grammar School. Not too long left. And Bradford Grammar have the lead. A big shout out as well to Ship Lake College who've just delivered us a team sheet. A big thank you.
Collier. Counter straight from the kickoff. Held up well, but still they go. Offload doesn't quite stick though. It's a knock on and a chance for Bradford Grammar to counter. Cries of keep the ball coming from the touchline. The knowledge is they've just got to keep this one alive. But it's a penalty to Richard Collier who go quick. Stab it through. It's a race for the line, a foot race. Player taken out. Referee gives a penalty and I'll tell you what it is. Oh, so lucky not to be a penalty try. Luckily, the cover was there. This is it, the game on a knife edge. Collier across for their third of the game. It's Owen O'Donoghue. He's been a rock, an absolute rock in defence and he gets his reward with a try. Three tries apiece. All gonna come down to conversions in this game. Barely any time left. Collier missed that conversion. <laughs> Referee just calls time off as the players look to find the ball, which is buried somewhere in around the UR7's tent. Good to see them here as ever. So three tries apiece. Kick straight into touch. So a chance for Bradford Grammar School. It may be a final chance. The clock is very much ticking. Bradford Grammar look to probe. Trying to keep it alive. Taking it to the line now, getting the offload away. It's the try scorer, just hauled down this time. Gets the offload away, no. Spilled in contact, and that will be the game. Bradford Grammar School, I think, just edging that one via the boot. Winning it by two points. Oh, what a cracker of a game that was. Bradford Grammar School just taking the lead and it's a quick turnaround Chip Lake College are already on the pitch they're taking on Wellington College in just a little under two minutes I'm just going to get my team sheets in order and then I'll be back with you stay with us here on RE2 at the Rossin Park HSBC National School Sevens
Good defense, Good defense, Good defense. Good defense. Good defense. Yep, go on, go on, go on.
Right, you join me. Sorry, we've been a bit delayed. Um, Wellington College are a try up against Shiplake College, and uh, I'm alongside Chris Roberts from Samurai Rugby. Chris, very nice to see you. Brilliant to be here, Angus. Thanks so much. Uh, absolutely incredible day here. Uh, I remember the last time I was here, the, the rain came down, the, the, the pitches were soft, uh, all caught up after, after day one, but absolutely glorious sunshine here. Uh, and I know you've got your sun cream on your head, Angus, as well. I have certainly got plenty of sun cream on my head. This is Wellington College second seven that are out on the field in this VARS competition. The first team will be over in the cup competition later on. They're a try to the good though, this Wellington College side, but Shiplake College have given us a team sheet, so they're going to get plenty of airtime, I have to say. Um, Shiplake looking very good. And by the way, the first stat, you'll like this, Chris, the first stat I've got here, Dan Henson, shirt number two, first of four generations not to attend Reading Bluecoat School. If that doesn't tell you about inter-school rivalries, nothing will. Oh, it's absolutely brilliant. And you look at, you know, the legacies and the alma maters, but, uh, but actually it goes hand in hand with the history of the Roslyn Park Sevens as well, the history of that family. Extraordinary. Absolutely extraordinary. And so, of course, big, uh, big weakness, I guess, for Samurai in terms of, uh, you know, a, an absolute sea of potential players for Samurai and a, a sea of contacts to be made. And I'm sure a sea, of, a sea of people that might fancy wearing a bit of Samurai kit as well. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm here wearing two hats. First and foremost, on behalf of Samurai Sportswear going out, we're, uh, we're changing our, our modelling of the way we do things by delivering uh, a bespoke kit holding. Uh, but also with my, my other, albeit smaller hat on with Samurai Sevens, we are uh, running a, a full programme this summer, uh, an academy programme program uh, as well as a senior program and obviously on the lookout for, for talented players who may well make that step up and, and our links with uh, with, with England and, and previously you know Great Britain are giving giving players that that brilliant platform to kick on in the abbreviated form of the game. Absolutely and a player showing his sevens wheels there for Wellington College streaking down the left hand side for their second, second try of the game. A strong start from Wellington College as we go into half time with the Berkshire men. A couple of tries to the good. Playing some lovely stuff here in the sunshine. And how good, Chris, is it to be out here in the sunshine? I've been here in the wind, the snow, the rain, the sleet. But a bit of sun is always just makes that bit of difference, doesn't it? You've got to say there's there's no place better. You look out across all these pitches, all these players, all these kits, all these ages of players. And people talk about that, you know, sevens is a game for the summer. And I know there has been a, a lot of discussion and certainly some blogs on, on your website as well about when the seven season should be played. But the fact the sun has come out here and I think the forecast is, is great all week uh, is brilliant because obviously, you know, the game is is fundamentally, you know, running, passing, catching. And uh, and people often say to me when you, you, you step out in that pouring rain, it's great rugby weather. No, it's not. It's hard pitches and sunshine is, is definitely the best rugby weather. I'm with you there. Sevens is a summer sport to be played in the sunshine. When you're outside all day, you don't want to be sitting around cold, wet and miserable. You want to be having fun, having an ice cream from that ice cream truck over there. That's what it's all about. Not that I'd encourage all the athletes out here to be chomping down ice creams between games. But those of us on a watching brief, we can do that. That'll be, that'll be one for the staff, Angus. <laughs> absolutely absolutely although there's a there's a tent a little further down the field that i fancy the staff might be poking their way towards rather more seriously we're about ready to start the second half ship lake college are going to kick off always a fan of the ship lake kit because they've got their numbers on their sleeves as well as on their back makes it nice and easy for us to identify who's who supported by the matt hampson foundation as well a brilliant charity on the front of their shirts Referee just checking that everyone's got the right numbers. 
And we'll be away any moment. Here we go. Hoisted high. Wellington, well, a big early call, but perhaps the focus should have been on the ball rather than the call. Spilled forward and Shiplake will have a chance to set up from the scrum. And of course, sevens is where the sort of the uh, the view of the kickoff being the third set piece really began to, to open up, I guess, because of all that extra space. A real focus on, I imagine, when you're working with the samurai team. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're, we're, when we're putting a squad together, you, ne you need to look at the sum of the parts uh, and every every position has something they bring to the table. You know, gone are the days of picking your best seven players and whacking them on a field. You know, you've got to have all the different parts and, and certainly looking at that, that aerial ability, both from a receipt perspective, but also that ability to really put the ball up high on a kickoff and, and compete for that ball is really, really vital nowadays. Yeah, I always remember the, the great Millfield team of 2014, 2015 sort of era. Um, when I reel off the names, listeners will understand what I mean by a great team. They had Callum Sheedy and Adam Hastings both playing fly half at international level these days in that back line. Tom Whiteley playing for Bristol Bears was there. Alec Coombs playing Scotland Sevens was there. It was that kind of a team. But actually one of the key men was a lad called John Radford, whose entire job was catch kickoff give ball carry on and that was all he was there to do but he did a fine job of it and it just shows you you know possession is is so important and whereas before you talk about the idea of looking after and respecting possession you've got to get that possession first absolutely and actually I, an amazing amazing piece of play i saw up at the north of england sevens earlier this season as ship lake scorched through they've got to try they're on the score sheet and with plenty of time left on the clock, they've got every chance in this game. The Rosslyn Park touchlines, a, a sea of friendly faces. Meetings and greetings and all sorts. It's a, it's a day out for the parents, not just for the pupils. I, it, it's a real massive celebration as well. You know, you do see a lot of parents and, and it's amazing to see that you go around the touch lines across the country uh, on any day a match is being played and, and the parents are there, you know, supporting and, and living it as well. And it's a great opportunity again in the sunshine to come and meet up uh, and whether it's with fellow parents from the same school or, or, or opposition parents from a, from a similar circuit, it really is a celebration of rugby. It really is. And we've got a cracking game on our hands. Wellington College were two tries up. Shiplake have bounced back. And Wellington with the old uh, wheeling arm to readdress the balance. And moving up towards the halfway line. Feisty competition at the breakdown. Cutting back inside go Wellington College. And that's allowed Shiplake to have a dart at the ball. And they are determined to go quickly, but they've not tapped it. I think they were rather hoping to get an extra 10 metres there from the referee. A huge thundering contact and again Shipley College running rampant in contact. Ball spilled was it? No, referee judges it was fine. So Shiplake sweep back the other way and here we go. It's that big carrier again and he goes for another huge, huge contact. Takes the ball in, he's a little isolated though, but his support just gets there in time. And again, Wellington College are competing fiercely at the breakdown and they do brilliantly to get the ball away there. And they've got a chance to counter, three on one, if they can just draw and give, four on one rather I mean. Now it's a straight race for pace. One by Shiplake College though, and what a tackle that is, that Wellington do well to keep the ball alive. And in the end they get the penalty. And well, we saw the full range of what happens on a sevens field there from physicality to breakdown expertise to manipulation of space. It was all there. No, absolutely. And again, when you talk about the individuals, you know, having a big ball carrier is very, very important. I thought what Wellington did really well was they, cho they chose when to compete at the breakdown. If you, if you play that back, there was a couple of times where they just made the tackle and held off, but then cho chose when to go for the ball and they regained possession. Absolutely. And it's Sam Bork there, the number 14 that was that big carrier for Shiplake College. Played Joseph in the school play. Well, I tell you what, if Joseph was like that, the Bible would be a very different story. Wellington College on the attack. 
but it's turned over. Knock on. Shiplake will have the ball. Huge support on the touchline for Shiplake College, and they've got every chance of a big, big result in this first game. Bork's off having a rest, but the rest of his teammates have got a chance here against Wellington College. And this is no second seven. This is a top, top group of players. Many of whom would be playing first seven at another school. And of course, this is the culmination of, of several weeks of preparation. There's been several tournaments that have gone place over the whole country and, uh, and teams would have been getting their sevens fitness up as well as their, uh, their core tactics. Absolutely would have been. As I receive yet another team sheet. This is outstanding stuff. Thank you very much. A big shout out to Canford for delivering a team sheet. When you give us team sheets, you make us smile. Shiplake College making a smile at the moment, though. Into the sec into the opposition half they go. It's scrappy ball, but it's their ball, and that's what counts. On they charge. Delayed pass. Does well to get back to his feet, does the Shiplake man. But it's a penalty, Wellington College. And that breakdown is such a key area in sevens. It's almost not the natural area we think of, but it is so often where the game is won and lost. Now, I think if you look, look back at the last few years, the way that it's developed in the 15 side of the game, where you've got obviously more, more, more players on the field, it, it, dare I say, becomes more and more crucial within, within the sevens game, again, for that fight for competition and having somebody or, or a number of players um, with that ability to, to tackle and then jackal and turn the ball over. Absolutely, and I suppose if nothing else, the very the very process of slowing it down, albeit by much less time in sevens, but if you can buy your team a couple of seconds, that makes all the difference. Yeah, and I think that comes into the decision making. You, you know, you might say that what is success at a breakdown? Is it winning the ball back? Is it slowing down? And I think it's the decision making under a, under a setting. If somebody has made a, a break by actually slowing that down and allowing your teammates to come back into that defensive line can make all the difference for the next phase. Certainly makes all the difference when I'm playing because the lungs tend to be blowing rather. Any respite is welcome. Wellington College have had a plenty of respite. We had a bit of a delay there in proceedings. As Wellington look to hold on to this slender advantage that they've got. Big dancing footwork up the left-hand side from the big number 12. Proving very tricky to bring down. Shiplake having to scramble to get back and there's a few tired bodies out there. First game of the day for these lads, but it's been an intense one. But it's a penalty, Shiplake. The opportunity is there and they're marched back 10 at Wellington College. Shiplake, a sense of momentum around them at the moment. Patience is going to be key. The clock lasts as long as you want, as long as you keep that ball alive. And they're doing a good job of it at the moment. Scrappy ball, but their ball, that's what matters. Into the hands of Charlie Moss. And now out wide to Joe Rogers. Rogers takes it into contact and Wellington swarm around it. They've turned the ball over. Could Shiplake turn it back though? No, the referee judges that originally they were holding on. And that one of those instances you were talking about, Wellington College realised we need the ball here and sent three men at that breakdown. And I think as we as we see full time in the last couple of passages of play, we saw the importance of the, the um, defensive player coming in to steal the ball. But also when legs are really tired, the importance of that backup player, that second player in to either secure the ball or clear the defensive player out. Absolutely. So it finishes up with Wellington College just edging that one against Ship Lake College. Up next, we're going to have Sir Joseph Williamson's on the left-hand side of your screen coming on very shortly. On the right-hand side of your screen, we're going to have Stowe in the gold. Uh, Co Stowe, I hear from the touchlines next to me. Stowe with a big, healthy squad, actually. They're looking, looking, looking sharp and ready. They've been warming up well. Stowe on the right-hand side. Blue shorts, gold hoops. 
with a thin blue stripe across them. Stowe, one of the big dark horses here. We're going to be back with you very shortly while we arrange some, some team sheets for this. We've got to say Joseph Williamson's one tucked away in a back pocket somewhere, but I've got no chance of finding that unless I have a, look, a quick look. So we'll be back with you very shortly. So, back on RE2, 0-0. Nil, nil. So, Joseph Williamson's in the gold and black hoops on the left-hand side of your screen. On the right-hand side of your screen, Stowe in their yellow and blue, the thin blue stripe. And guess what? We've got team sheets for both of these teams. It is exciting times here on the Rosson Park National School 7's touchlines on RE2. So Joseph Williamson, it's a long name that, isn't it? We're going to we're going to call them Williamsons. Send the ball into the line out. It's a good line out, and they go for the mall. You don't see that often in sevens. Stowe react well. Penalty awarded, but the old surprise mall from Sir Joseph Williamson is almost paying off. very tight bunched up play oh and a huge tackle from Stowe and they hack it through Stowe on the charge left foot right foot playing this way and that brilliant work from Stowe Noah Cowan now stabs it through it's a race of the line and it's kicked clear by Sir Joseph Williamson's and it's smart work there in defense actually had he used his hand, that would have been a penalty, but he got his boot to ball and he has saved his team. Noah Cowan inches away from the opening score in this game. Twenty two dropout. Gathered by Stowe. 
Oh, by Sir Joseph Williamson. I don't worry. Well taken by Tom Carney and Sir Joseph Williamson's. A young under 16 fullback that took that one. Come on, next. Nice. <laughs> Phil Bowers, the referee on next. Remind he has to be very nice to him. Are we ever anything but? Turnover Stowe. And they charge down the right hand side. Simple hands does it. And it's the opening score of the game. Superb work from Ewan Baker. Very handy having the so replacements right next to me to point out these things. <laughs> Conversion made, 7 0 lead for Stowe. Big, big chance in this tournament to the Buckinghamshire side have. Had a fantastic 15 a side season. Going all the way to the plate final. That's meant to slightly compromise seven seasons though, so we've not seen them on the circuit too much. But they've got a big, big opportunity. Williamson's with a chance to break. Doing well to make some progress. Penalty to Sir Joseph Williamson's. Ball stays in field though. Baker with a chance to counter. Spreads it wide. Ball bounces. Rather helpfully though, bounces forward. Handy work. Let the ball do the work. That's what they say, isn't it? Baker again. Charges through onto Jacob Wells. Wells. Oh, lovely step from Wells. Wells underneath the sticks. The pass from Baker and then the step and the gas from Wells. Fantastic work. Stowe's second try of the game. They are off to a flyer. And it's half time. Stowe, two tries up against Sir Joseph Williamson's. Brilliant, brilliant start to the day's play from Stowe. Oh, no, no, no. 
Here we are then, ready to start the second half here on RE2 at the Rosson Park HSBC National School 7s. Stowe, two tries to the good up against Sir Joseph Williamson's who will be kicking off to start proceedings in the second half. It's been a glorious day. And it's Henry Pollock, the Northampton Saints superstar. He's Scottish qualified and he's charging down and he's released Charlie Maxwell McDonald, the skipper, down the right-hand side. Pollock to Maxwell McDonald. What a start to the second half from Stowe. All power, pace, and quick thinking in response to the kickoff. Their third try of the game. And they ring the changes. Absolutely fantastic start to the second half from Stowe. Now, just to give you a little run through while we've got a bit of time as we wait for the ball to come back. Up next here on pitch one, on pitch two rather, RE2, we've got Birkenhead against Camford. Then at 12 p.m., Basileg against the reigning champions, Bromsgrove. We've already seen Basileg in action. And then it'll be Bradford Grammar School against Marlborough College. We've already seen Bradford Grammar as well, haven't we? And then Cheltenham College against Radley College at 12.40. And then we'll be well into the afternoon. Here, though, it's Group K, and it's Sir Joseph Williamson's against Stowe. Stowe are three tries up. Stowe are on absolute fire here in this game. It's a big group, this group as well. Northampton School for Boys and Loughborough Grammar. The other two sides in this group. Uh, let me tell you, Stowe against Northampton School for Boys is one of, one of those games that you've just got to keep an eye on. Penalty to Sir Joseph Williamson's though. Kick long. Oh, it's a huge, huge kick, but it stays in field. Really unlucky there, Sir Joseph Williamson's. Stowe, all pace and power coming into this. Pollock, fast hands down to the wing. It's now just a gas race. Kick in field. Oh, the old fashioned in field kick. Archie McParlin now on the charge. The Northern Irishman underneath the sticks. Got an England under 18 cap against Wales, and he's got a try here at the Rosslyn Park HSBC National School Sevens. And I do love an infield kick. You don't see them too often nowadays. They were way in vogue in the 80s and 90s. We lost them for 25 years, but we see it here. I think it was Ollie Hartigan kicking it in, and then Archie McParland, one of two players in this school, in this Stowe side to an England under 18 caps against Wales last week. Will Placis being the other one. Will Placis, by the way, who will be joining the Scarlets in Wales at the end of his school career. Apologies. Will Placis actually played for Wales in that game. I was getting all excited. Will Placis played for Wales under 18 against Archie McParland who was playing for England under 18. There we go. Never let it be said that we're too bold to admit our mistakes. So Joseph Williamson's take the ball into contact. Coached by Taft William from Medway. There's some really good players in this Sir Joseph Williamson side. They've got the penalty. So they're going to stick to the corner. They've had a couple not actually quite make touch. But this one safely does, and it's a brilliant kick, actually. Takes them to within five metres. I would wager a good chance. Yeah, 
Well, we saw them win the first half. Try the old trick. Driving line out. What are they going to go for this time? They go to the middle. They bring it down. They look to drive again, but it's spilled in contact. They get a penalty. They're saying that Stowe came round the side there. But Stowe are over the ball brilliantly. That is absolutely outstanding play on the deck from Henry Pollock. And Pollock takes it quick and Stowe are going to go from their own try line. And they may well go all the way. The pass goes to hand and it does. A beautiful pass. Brilliant, brilliant defence from Sir Joseph Williamson to get back. We see another kick in field. We saw it for the second, for the third try. A penalty from, for Stowe. From one end to the other. Now McParland. They're going fast still. Pollock now. Brings it back the other way. McParland. Cuts in field. Oh, superb. Joe Atkinson with the try. A wonderful score. Stowe from under pressure on their own line. But 30 seconds ago, work their way upfield. Show great patience. And as they look to go right, they then sweep back to the left-hand side and underneath the post. The fourth try of the game. And they are in control here on RE2. Very, very handy having the Stowe side right alongside me for commentary. Just got to be careful not to be too rude. I'd never be rude. Don't worry. Stowe, get the ball back off the off the kickoff. McParlin takes it into contact. Really good work on the floor from Sir Joseph Williamson. So they're working really, really hard on the deck. Four tries down, but they are giving... Absolutely no quarter. Tom Carney, by the way, just to give you an idea of some of the guys that Sir Joseph Williamson have got. An England un uh, an under 16 playing fullback for Saracens. Back row for Saracens, Richie Ajuze. They've got some serious talent in their side. But they are up against a Stowe side that is playing some phenomenal rugby. And they're going to get a fifth try as Henry Pollock. He decides to turn the afterburners on eventually. A little stroll home it began as. Fifth try of the game. The Northampton Saints man. He's looked good since he came on. Big turnover. Big couple of plays and now a try. And that's full time. A big win for Stowe against the Joseph Williamson. Stowe, we said they were a side to look out for. And boy, have they proved it early on. We're going to take a quick rest from commentary now as we go and find a couple of co-commentators for a few of the big later games coming up. But still live on your screens, up next is going to be a cracker of a game. Birkenhead against Camford in Group L. Group L, which features Dollar Academy from Scotland, Gower College from Wales, and then Birkenhead and Camford. It's going to be a big old group. On the whistle, we're going to have Phil Bowers. And we'll be back with you very shortly on comms. The pictures will stay with you. Don't worry about that. Stowe, a fantastic performance. Here we go, boys. Start seven,
Shake then, Tom. Tom. Yeah, not. Get back in your position.
Remember our hips when we come up. Connor, Connor, just get in shape, please. Connor. Get behind the ball.
So after a bit of a rest from uh, my voice, some of you will view that as a good thing. We're back again, and it's Basel Lake School scoring the opening try in this game. Is it not quite just hauled down defending champions, Bromsgrove? Just, just making the tackle in time. Brilliant work from Bromsgrove in defence. Group A game, this one, of course. Defending champions always in Group A. And Bromsgrove on the attack from their own try line. Can they go coast to coast? The legs already starting to have a bit of a wobble, but they're going to make it, our Bromsgrove. From a moment of peril on their own try line. It's a moment of joy at the other end. Bromsgrove with the opening score in this game for a 7-0 lead. Base leg school. As I'm told it's pronounced, I was mispronouncing it, calling it bass leg, base leg. On the left hand side of your screens, a try down in the blue and yellow hoops. Bromsgrove on the right hand side, the defending champions in maroon. A try to the good, but a penalty against them. Base leg, spill it. Bromsgrove with a chance to counter. And we've seen how much this side love to counter attack. Bromsgrove, there they go. Second try of the game. Brilliant work from Bromsgrove. A shout out to anyone watching on the stream. Anyone who wants to come along for a bit of co-commentary alongside me, do just make your way along or contact me direct on at Angus Savage XV on either Twitter or Instagram. And I will find a way to get in touch with you and bring you over for a bit of co-coms. We're very, very willing to do so as Bromsgrove. It's a third try of the game for them. It's going to be a second try for the man in 12. Well, we said this group was likely to come down to Bromsgrove and Prezelli. And it looks as though that's the way it's going. And I do apologise to dip out on commentary on this one. I am being beckoned by the tournament organisers. Hopefully with good news.
Big hits, more than that. Max. Hold on, hold on, Charlie. Good, good, good. Well, well done, Ollie. Well done. Good, I'm ready. Three, three, boys. Three, three. Oh, let's just go full group. Full group on the next one. No, we're not. 
Yeah, full, 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 We did, yes, thank you, Mr. Turley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you join us live for Radley College against Cheltenham College. I've been handed a Cheltenham College team sheet. All very exciting. We've got some here still on camera. I've been sorting out all sorts in the background, but we've got team sheets for Cheltenham College, but it's Radley College on the attack. Oh, 
Toby Tame. You'll recognise him from the Under-18 Academy League. Nick Wood, also commonly found as an assistant referee in the Premiership, is head coach Nick Wood, a former England prop. Cheltenham College on the attack. We are right in the thick of it here in commentary on the Radley benches. Parents and all sorts alongside. This is a big game, one of the biggest games of the season in the 15 aside. Context. And here we are in the sevens context. It's Radley on the attack, and Radley showing real promise early on. Big counter attack, Cheltenham, but it's a penalty to Radley. Huge opportunity here. And here they go. Released down the left-hand side. Are they across the line? Yes, they are. The referee. I think he might be about to order a penalty try. It's a yellow card. And under the sticks he goes. It's a 7-0 lead for Radley College at Cheltenham. Or a try down and a man down. Bit of a former Gloucester head-to-head -head on the touchlines as well. Radley College, coached by Nick Wood. Cheltenham College by Ollie Morgan, who of course were Gloucester teammates for so many years. It's a real off-field battle as well as the on-field battle, but on-field at the moment is Radley College, who are on fire. A big, big challenge under the high ball, but it's taken in the air and it'll be a penalty to Cheltenham College. The touch lines are roaring here. And the cramp is already starting to set in. Cheltenham on the attack, Gilderson, the England centre, probing, dips the ball through, but there's space, it's well covered by Radley though. Cheltenham College on the attack. Gilderson here. Ball in hand. The big miss pass. Straight into touch though. Collects the injured Radley man on the way. And a real sense of intensity about this one. Gone is the early morning. Crisp air and calm voices. Now we're into the thick of it the afternoon session and it's getting big. Radley getting the ball out wide from the scrum and they sigh through again. Could it be a second try? No, Hall down, but it gets a delicious, delicious offload away. It's a race for the try line. Hall down early, but another offload and another tackle. Heroic defensive work, brilliant offloading. Slow down ball. Could be another yellow. Playing advantage to Radley at the moment. Cheltenham under all sorts of pressure. Radley get it through the hands, it's a cross in the corner, it's that man Tame. Toby Tame with the try and it's two tries to Radley. Cheltenham under the pump a bit there, down to six men. As Marlborough College trot pass to begin their warm up. Allows me the chance to stretch my wings a little bit. No, the cable won't go that far. Again. 
big performance from Radley College so far. Impressive start from the men in white. Line out Cheltenham. Important moments in the game this. Cheltenham need to get back. Gilderson gets the offload away. Cheltenham charging down the right hand side into the hands of Tom Riman, the Gloucester man. But he's called back. Riman thought he was away. The Gloucester outside back, but he's called back. Radley hold their two try advantage. Some terrific performances on this pitch already today. As the Stowe team walk towards me, they're among the top performers in the early parts of this game. Free kick, Radley College. Off they go, probing. Ball back inside, spilled, but it's well gathered. Important work there from Radley's number seven. And they're around the corner quickly, looking to get it through the hands fast instead. They step inside, but Gilderson with a big thumping tackle. The blonde number 10, and he goes quick as well. All red faced and blonde haired, and playing some good rugby. Dink through from Ollie Elliott. But we come back for a penalty at the previous breakdown. Elliott knew he was playing advantage. Cheltenham College dart inside for their first try of the day. Finn Hurst is the man. The field is absolutely littered with bodies. This has been an intense game. And you can see that with a number of boys taking some time to get back to their field, cramping up already. Second game of the day, but in this heat, you can already see what a toll it's taking on the players out there. Some parents come past. Good afternoon. A day of excitement for everyone in the sun. And on hard pitches, and in glorious sunlight, this is an energy sapping day for those out there. Big shout out, by the way, to number 17, who have built our incredible um, camera tower. Absolutely fantastic. And it 
comes with a roof, which in normal circumstances I'd be saying, well, it protects us from the wind and the rain, fantastic. But in, on this occasion, it's protecting us from sunburn. Who would have thought? Rosslyn Park Sevens, I've done this in the snow. I've told you that before, I'm sure, already on this stream, but it's that amazing to be here in the sunlight. Half time then, Radley College leading two tries to one against Cheltenham College. Back underway then, Radley College on the right hand side of your picture in the white shirts, Cheltenham College on the left hand side in the red and black hoops, Radley College leading two tries to one as it stands, but a chance to go three tries to one up, they're under all sorts of pressure at Cheltenham College, they've done superbly well not to go over their own try line, but they've done so illegally and it's an early penalty for Radley on the attack, get a brilliant offload away working to get themselves across in the corner and they do oh so well in the left hand corner third try of the game what a brilliant performance so far from radley college been a really good start from Radley College. Return to play the medical experts along the touchline on the right hand side. Pete Richards, one of their staff, former England scrum half, resplendent in pink shorts and bright pink shirt and bright, bright pink socks rather. Yellow card, Radley College taking the man out in the air. Unbelievable sock choice from Pete Richards, it has to be said. The stick I was getting for my purple trousers yesterday. Not that I'm much better today, I've gone with green. Cheltenham on the attack, a man up now. We saw Radley capitalise earlier when they were a man up. Can Cheltenham do likewise with the extra man themselves? Rimmon plays scrum half, but instead it's a penalty, Radley College. And a bit of back chat sees them march back 10. And Toby Tame will go for the corner. And Radley College are going to have a line out five metres from the line as they seek their fourth try of this game. They're down to six men. They're playing some lovely stuff.
Bradley, quick line up. Not straight though, according to the referee. Didn't go five, in fact. So we'll have a scrum, Cheltenham College ball, five metres out from their own try line. This is sevens though, so it means nothing. They could go from anywhere. Radley trying to defend, but Gilderson breaking down this right-hand touchline for Cheltenham College. What a wonderful tap tackle that is. Fantastic work from Radley College, but Cheltenham now burst away. And it's the number 15, Ben Cunningham, who's going to scorch away. Oh, it was brilliant work from Gilderson. It was brilliant in defence from Cheltenham College, from Radley College. But Cheltenham make the break down the touchline and Ben Cunningham gets away for their second try of the match. Desperately unlucky for Radley College. They were so good in defence to swarm around that breakdown. But the alertness from Cheltenham College keeps them in this game. And boy, did they need that. Just noticed the Radley College coaching staff wearing Radley College Teen 2019. Sounds like a, a rugby trip to a ski resort. My kind of trip, that. Gilderson takes it to the line, gives it out to Austin on the right hand side. Strong start. It has been from Radley College. But Cheltenham are starting to come into their own now. Radley take the line out fast, but the referee will bring them back. Line out formed, says the man in sky blue. Resplendent in their Cayman Islands sponsored shirts, the referees today. Ball spilled at the line out, so we'll have a Cheltenham College scrum. Time starting to tick in this game. Radley College with the lead. Gilderson steps back inside. Well shackled by the Radley defence though. Penalty was looking like it would go Radley College's way, but there was no clear release, so Cheltenham go fast. Big defence again from Radley College. But the referee has his arm out for an advantage. Possibly not back 10 off the quick tap. Radley are working so hard in defence. Firing through. The referee's not happy, but it is unbelievable effort in defence from Radley College. Can Cheltenham College exploit the penalties that they've had? Riman goes for the line and gets across. He does indeed. Three tries apiece now. And from looking home and hosed, Radley College are in a battle here. And that's it all over. That crucial final try for Cheltenham College, giving them the edge in this game. 
from a position of control. Radley just let it slip off, but it was a superb comeback from Cheltenham College. One of the games of the day here on RE2. These two are two very, very good sides. Apologies if the uh, picture's not quite on where you want us to be. We're doing a quick cameraman swap, allowing for a bit of lunch, and uh, the teams have changed over rather faster than we were expecting here on RE2. Normally a bit of a wait, but on this occasion, they are looking like they're off to a flying start. Wellington College on the right-hand side of your screens, by the way, up against them. I will confirm very shortly. We will be back with you as Wellington College cross the line. We'll be back with you in commentary very shortly as we just sort out our cameraman some lunch.
Hello. I am under the water. Hi, George Cunningham. I'm friends with Jamie and I'm. Oh boy! Get back, let's set, let's set.
Push up. Henry, stay high. Chug, chug, chug. Yeah, go,
Tackle Jamie!
Toby, Toby. You join us again then for Thomas Hardy School up against St. Olaf's Grammar. Should be a fantastic contest. Two schools with a great reputation. St. Olaf's you're recognising their purple socks. Thomas Hardy in the red and black hoops. Thomas Hardy, remember, who were absolutely outstanding a few years ago in the under 15 schools vase where Orlando Bailey was their superstar fly half. Now, of course, strutty as stuff in a bath shirt. Fantastic start from Central Love's first try of the game. Top start for them. Superb work from Center Love's grammar. And those of you that were listening to earlier streams, I've been telling you about referees that have refereed me. This referee has also refereed me. Very keen on front rows knowing their technique, this man. Key feature of his pre-game chat. Less so on the sevens field though, of course. St. Olaves concede the penalty. Thomas Hardy with a chance to go forward.
Thomas Hardy penalty. They go fast. They look like they were thinking about going deep. They do, in fact, go deep this time. A little dink over the top. How's the bounce? Oh, so unlucky. Just drifts from one side to the other, that bounce. Desperately, desperately unlucky. Ball shifted from left to right, right to left rather, and it's a second try for St. Olaf's Grammar. The Kent School on absolute fire. Early doors. Incredible atmosphere here at Roston Park today. The sun's out, shining, everyone's having a lovely day. This is what it's all about. A few of the staff at lunchtime very much enjoying themselves as well. And why not? Boys enjoying themselves on the field as well. Centre Lives Grammar. Off to a flying start. Free kick. Kick didn't go 10. So Thomas Hardy looked to make the half break. Try to get the offload away. Goes to hand. Not the man intended, but they may get away yet. Yeah. Looking to go on the outside. Stepping back in. Intense start. And it's away and Thomas Hardy have closed the gap from two tries down. They're now just one behind. Great start, Thomas Hardy. Ah. Peter Crawshaw has emerged. Central Lives charging out the right hand side, but a brilliant cover tackle from Thomas Hardy stems that tide. They stay just a try behind. Incredibly tight game. But we come back for the Central Lives penalty. Turnover, Thomas Hardy on the attack. Offload out the back, ambitious, but it does go to hand. Thomas Hardy 
playing really close and tight. The offloads are starting to stick, though. And just as I say that, the offload goes to deck and we'll restart with a scrum. And that'll be half time. St. Olaf's Grammar leading two tries to one against Thomas Hardy. A fantastically close game so far. A real battle here on RE2 at the Rossin Park HSBC National School Sevens. Well, we've been quiet on the mic in the opening minutes of this second half, but we're about to get very loud indeed because Thomas Hardy level things up with their second try of the game. It's two tries apiece. We could be in for another thriller here on RE2. It's been an awesome day so far. Sunshine and caps all around. I'm having an ice cream soon. Don't often get the chance. Centre lives. This could be the moment. Charging away. Can they get the offload to stick? They can indeed. And then little number nine goes charging through. Great support line, but it was all about the break in the offload from his inside man. Absolutely fantastic response to conceding the try from Centre Lives Grammar. The Kent side stepping up when they needed to. And after all that work to claw their way back in it, Thomas Hardy have to do it all over again. Oh, 
Thomas Hardy, respond. Oh, what a response that is. Twice now, they've dug themselves out of the hole. Can they now go in front? Thomas Hardy. Oh, they're going to have to come back again. They may well do. Centre Larves are bursting through, stabbed through, intelligent play. He was under all sorts of pressure, but Thomas Hardy looked to me like they kicked that one dead. Referee instead is going to bring things back for a scrum just outside the 22. So nearly a try for Centre Larves. Thomas Hardy lived to fight another day. They'll have to put into the scrum this game on an absolute knife edge. Confirmation that the score is 17 apiece. We are in an absolute nail biter here on RE2. Thomas Hardy with the put in. Looking this way and that. All comes down to one chance. The offload away, and now it's just a straight race for pace. The pace is going to be lost by Thomas Hardy, but can they secure possession? They can indeed. They've got to find the space now. It's now or never for Thomas Hardy, keeping a hold of it. St. Alarves are over the top of it though. The penalty's gonna come, the penalty does come. And now the tables turn, it's up to them to make the crucial play. They're going down the wing with full gas. They're gonna get away for the try. It's all about the clock now. They're getting underneath the posts Our St. Alarves. How long on the clock? That's the question on everyone's lips. Or at least mine. Thomas Hardy. Well, we will have kickoff. We know that much. This game has gone this way and that. Conversion made. 24-17. St. Olaf's grammar are in the lead. Thomas Hardy looking to respond. Two tries might be beyond them, but there may be time for one. Taken cleanly. Ball spilled in contact, but goes backwards. The contact area is ferocious. They need to keep this ball alive to Thomas Hardy. At the moment, though, there are three players tied into the breakdown. That won't work for them. They take it into contact again. They've got the penalty, though, for the high tackle. They are needing to work super hard to win the ball at every breakdown. The best advice they can be given is to keep it away from that breakdown as much as they possibly can. Here they go, though, breaking through. It's a race for the post. Who's going to win it? It's going to be St. Olaf's again, but they get the overload away, but it's spilled. This game. 
is twisting this way and that. St. Olives have the advantage, but Thomas Hardy there came oh so close. They're a converted try behind though, so they need two scores. St. Olaf's win the scrum, break out from their own 22. And another penalty. Some clever time wasting from St. Olaf's. And they give it to the big man to charge up. The tackles are slipped off, and that is going to be the game done and dusted. The big man breaking through the tackles. He's being hunted down, but he's going to get across the line. That's going to be 31 points to 17 when the conversion is surely made. What a turnaround. From under their own posts. St. Olaf's go the distance. And that is it all over. The scoreline will not reflect the game it showed. This game could have gone either way. It was on a knife edge throughout. But in the end, it's St. Olaf's who take the title. And up next, my schedule has sadly blown away. But up next on the left-hand side, it looks like we've got Seaford College emerging onto the field. And it's going to be Brintegg coming up against them as very helpfully pointed out by their playing members just next to me. Very handy commentary position this from that point of view. This could be a classic. Brinteg have been absolutely superb on the seven circuit this year. It's been a really strong year for the Welsh colleges. Seaford College though, they've not played a lot of sevens. They did a decent job at their own tens tournament right at the start of the season. And then they had no rugby at all up until the Surrey sevens just a couple of weeks ago where they performed absolutely brilliantly. And in their first game this morning, they were absolutely on fire against Sir Joseph Williamson's. So we are expecting big things from Seaford College, but it could be even bigger things from Brinteg. This could be an absolute classic. We'll be back with you very shortly. I am due to go and do a little bit of work on the computer, but I will be back for the second half to join you on the cameras. I think we've got a bit of a switch up top. I believe Samir is back behind the camera for this one. So we will be with you very shortly.
Still halfway.
Park House B Hill House.
Becky, slow yourself! Becky, mate! Becky, you've got time, mate! Now go!
Text Lucian. <laughs> We're all set. Okie dokie, welcome back everyone. I hope you've been enjoying what we've had so far. Cracking game there between Tiffin and Eastbourne College. Before that, Brinteg and Seaver College. Boy, oh boy, was that a big one. But we're here for another absolute cracker here on RE2 in the Rossin Park HSBC National School 7s. The event of the school calendar. Kicking off on your right-hand side in their blue, purple and white hoops, a solly hull. And on the left-hand side, receiving the ball of Wellington College in their traditional gold and black. And what a take off the kickoff from Solly Hull. Oh, superb stuff. In the hands of Pierce Smith. Solly Hull playing good, patient sevens here. Back in the hands of Smith. Smith now puts on the afterburners. He's looking to go around the outside. Steps back in. He's away towards the post. Can they catch him, Wellington College? No, they can't. Pierce Smith with a wonder try. Pierce Smith, I am helpfully corrected. Pierce Smith. Well, he looked so calm in possession at first, and then the second time he got the ball, he just pinned his ears back, stepped from right to left, scorched away, and then the step inside to beat the last man, and he just about had the legs, didn't he, to go all the way.
Solly Hull, though, kick off. This time collected by Wellington College. What a take it was on that first one from Solly Hull, by the way, wasn't it? Absolutely incredible. Wellington College on the attack. Some really good players, by the way, in this Wellington College side. It's a second seven, but I tell you, there are some players that would be playing first seven at a lot of other teams around the country. As away they go, charging through the middle, looking to get away. What a cover tackle that is, but the offload is away from Wellington College. They start working their way towards the line, but they're crawling on the floor, I think the call is. It'll be a penalty, Solly Hole. But yeah, this Wellington College team, there are some absolutely fantastic players. Mason Archer playing at centre for London Irish, but as he's only just returning from injury in the number two shirt, you can see in your midfield there, he's playing in this second seven. What a player to have available in a second seven. Also part of the Welsh Exiles programme, by the way. Chasing back, go Wellington College. Will they go from their own... 22 yes they will yes they will go into the hands of Conor O'Byrne I think that is another London Irish man Irish qualified as well Conor O'Byrne staggering staggering quality in this Wellington College side Solly Holler working oh so hard on the deck and they earn the turnover. Ravinda Semi. That's not true. He stood just in front of me. Yeah. Subs helpfully pointing out that I'm getting my numbers 12 and 22 completely mixed up. Ryan McCourt, I think, is who I was looking for. Solly Hull charging down the left hand side well I may have got the man who got the turnover wrong but we will get the man who got the try right it's Will Sands an absolutely scorching burst down the left hand side Solly Hull two tries to the good this is a really really strong start from them Wellington College then two tries down against Solly Hull, who have been fantastic all day. Talking to the guys who were on commentary on uh, pitch one a few moments ago, and they've been singing their praises. And we are certainly singing their praises here. This has been an absolutely electric start against Wellington College. McCourt with the kickoff. Another cracker of a kickoff. An absolutely thundering tackle from Jack Kinder. He's one to watch. Part of the Worcester Warriors set up and was involved in the England under 18 camps as well was Kinder but Wellington College showing good good patience in possession stretching the play this way and that now they start to burst through the middle they're looking for that space ball in one hand but it doesn't matter they're guiding their way around the tackles get the offload off the deck now they move it fast from right to left Kill a moment here for Wellington College, but they show good patience. Take it into contact, and it's a penalty for a high tackle. So now they go quickly. Wellington College keeping the ball alive if they can. Get the offload out the top. Now they look to spread again. It's a good tackle that comes in, but Conor O'Byrne dances off the right foot twice and across the line. Not quite, is across the line this time. O'Byrne, I think dove over the wrong line, but somehow had created enough space for himself to be able to get back up and dive over the right one. He'll get a bit of stick for that, but at least he's finished it off. Yeah. 
I keep saying that's Conor O'Byrne, although I've got a feeling Conor O'Byrne may actually be in 10. With his knee strapped up. Kickoff goes awry, but Wellington College just about managed to tidy it up. Good work from their number nine into the hands of the number 10, who I think might actually be Conor O'Byrne. I'll stop guessing though, how about that? That'll do everyone better. Wellington College up to the 22. It's a big contact though, and it's a real contest on the floor from Solly Hull, and it's a huge turnover for Solly Hull. Just as they were starting to come under pressure, they step up with the big play in defence. And now the big play in attack, charging away for his second score of the game, goes Will Sands. Two tries for Sands, three for Solly Hull. Commanding, commanding bit of work from the Midland side. And I think when the conversion goes over, That'll be the half. Certainly is. Solly Hull leading Wellington College. Three tries to one. Back underway, Solly Hull with a patient, patient start. Wind has started to pick up, blowing into the faces of the Solly Hull team. They do well to stay orientated to get that offload backwards. Solly Hull sweeping the ball run out of ideas slightly so they put boot to ball that may give Wellington College an opportunity to counter they're looking buzzing around trying to probe for a gap and I'm not sure this Wellington College side is the sort of side you want to give possession to too easily and so it proves as they counter the kick to perfection to score their second try of the game
Solihull still have the lead, but Wellington College cut the advantage. Good kickoff from Wellington College creates a bit of chaos, but Solihull have it under control. So they look, patience is going to be key for Solihull. They're doing well to get themselves back behind the ball, but again they opt for the kick. And again, it could cost them dear. Wellington College counter, but fortunately for Solihull, the offload goes back to hand. And they need to start showing the patience not to kick it away. Playing from underneath their own try line. Watching, waiting, probing. Looking for the chance. But Wellington College, that pressure in defence. Solihull tried to be patient, but Wellington College came through with the power in defence, forced the error and dotted the ball down. And that's three tries apiece. Tremendous, tremendous work in defence from Wellington College. Wellington College going for the win. Darting this way and that. Oh, electric footwork from Wellington College. Ball inches from the line now. But it's turned over from Solly Hole. Ball loose at the breakdown. Can Solly Hole counter? The game on an absolute knife edge. Solly Hole looking to use their big, big unit. Big, big carrying work from Tom King. He's one to look out for as well as this tournament progresses. Solly Hull live to fight another day after that electric break from Wellington College. Solly Hull trying desperately to get away into the hands of Tom King. Offload away to Kinder. Not to Kinder, apologies to Line. Big pass wide, there's space there. Can Solly Hull get there? Yes, they can. Glorious, glorious cut inside. And it's the man who started the whole thing off at the beginning of the first half. Pierce Smythe scored the first try and he scored their fourth. And that may just give Solly Hull this game. Some tired, tired bodies out there. Huge, huge effort from everyone.
free kick, Wellington College. So they'll go quickly. Great work. Wellington College respond immediately. Oh, this game going back and forth, but no, it spilled just at the last. The tap tackle came in, the offload was missed. And Solihull have the penalty and they look to go now from their own try line. This game just keeps on giving. Sully Hull, their team urging them to kick it out. Can they get free to? Yes, they can. Sully Hull. I think we're going to play the line out. Well, the subs. Well, we all thought it was over and then we thought it wasn't. And it turns out it was. A superb performance from Solly Hull to take the win. It was a gritty one from Wellington College as well, who came back so magnificently, but Solly Hull responding at the end for an absolutely fantastic victory. Pierce Smythe with the crucial try. And Solly Hull secure the win. So after the excitement and drama of Solly Hull against Wellington College, it's now Bristol Grammar School against Queen's College Taunton, followed by Campion against Ridiwon. Should be a couple of great games. Bristol Grammar School have been playing some lovely stuff. I'm going to drop off commentary for a brief moment while we go and assess who exactly is going to be in the elimination round games. They're going to be coming up at 3.40 and 4 p.m. And then it's the girls under 15 plate final at 4.20. So we've got a bit of admin to do. And we're a one-man band today. So uh, it's down to me to do that admin. But the cameras will stay rolling. And I'll be back with you very shortly.
on.
Boys, slow it down. Hey, I'm looking for the boys. You took one out, okay? Yeah, next I'm job, not a bit. Yeah, we get him, boys. Circle! 
And so we reach that time of the day. It's the elimination round. The group winners pitted against one another. Winners of these games will be heading through to the Vars groups tomorrow afternoon, or tomorrow morning rather, ahead of the quarterfinals, semi-finals and final. Losers will head through to the bowl. And here in this one, it's massive. It's Seaford College up against Reeds, and Reeds take the kickoff. It's a big first tackle from Seaford College, smallest man on the pitch. But Reeds dancing, darting this way and that. Through the gates. Charging through the middle. Good ground from Reed. Seaford College, we've seen already a couple of times on RE2 in the Rosslyn Park, HSBC National School 7s. But Reeds are on fire early on. They get the chip through, bounce of the ball, just cost them. Seaford, really well done to get that one off the deck. 
But Reeds then turn it over again. Helter skelter start to this game of sevens. Reeds. Dominating possession early on. This is the first of two elimination rounds, or two elimination round games, I should say, here on RE2. We're just confirming what the following one will be after this. And then the final game of the day here on RE2 will be the girls' plate final at 4 p.m. At 4.20 p.m. rather. Seaford. Give away the penalty. Reeds really firing in the early stages here. Reeds take it into contact. Seaford trying desperately to turn it over. The ball comes loose, but it's in Reed's control now. Shifting it. They're playing a direct form at the moment. Charging tight, darting well, number 10 though, and it's away, that direct play, paying off. Brilliant bit of finishing. Reeds go 5 0 up, conversion to come. Reeds lead 7-0 as it stands. They go through in the bars. Seaford are going to the bowl. But it's early days yet. Call it boys! With cover press. Scream it! All yours, Tongi. Hoisted high by Reeds. Will Bowley though picks it up for Seaford College. He's a danger man. And Bowley accelerates through the gap. It's now just a race for the line, and it's a line. A race, rather, that Bowley is going to win. Underneath the sticks. Oh, that's wonderful. Wonderful footwork. He is not the man to kick to on kickoffs. Bowley bangs it over. Seven points apiece. Seaford kick long. Huge kick. Bounces and out. Towering kick from I think it was Henry Boyle. Seaford working hard. Oh, Jealous is all over that. All over that ball. He wins the penalty. What a player he is. Seaford. Get across the line again and again. It is that man, Will Bowley. An utter revelation. Seaford College lead 14 points to seven. 
from a try down. It's been all Seaford since. Seaford still they go on and now they cut through it's a race to the line trying oh so hard to haul it short of reeds and they've just about done it have they yes they have but they've given away the penalty in the process Seaford look to go quick and they do the referee's not happy quite with where it was taken from once it taken from exactly where the mark is. Now it's good. Seaford looking for a third score. They get the delicious offload away. Oh, and it's so well done. And it's a third try for Seaford College. And they have stepped up magnificently from a try down to three tries to one up. Superb work from Seaford College. And that's half time. Seaford College leading 21 points to seven. They have been absolutely fantastic in this elimination game so far. And so we come back for the second half. And I can tell you it's Dollar Academy against Stowe that'll be on after this, the next elimination ground, uh, round game. A little Anglo-Scots Anglo derby for us to get our teeth stuck into. Here though, Seaford College are leading. Three tries to one against Reeds. It could well be four tries to one if this sits up. Oh, and it sits up perfectly for Bowley. That's his hat trick. Will Bowley. Oh, have you ever seen a bounce sit quite so perfectly? Gathered deliciously, one-handed. Impish from Bowley. And this is some performance from Seaford College. They have been outstanding throughout the day. to give you a bit of a flavour of some of the other elimination round games that we've had today. Already one result through Simon Langton Grammar School beating Gordons 10-7. Elsewhere we've got Bishop Wordsworth again up against Uppingham. Cardinal Newman of taking on Queen Mary's College. Aundel against Royal Hostel School. Abingdon v Morven College that should be a good one. Bromsgrove against RGS Newcastle should be an absolute cracker as well. Dean Close against Monmouth. Eastbourne College against Marlborough College, Glen Armand College against Tunbridge, Queen Ethelburgers against Stonyhurst, 
Reeds v Seaford, as we're seeing here with Seaford four tries to one up. Will Bowley with a hat trick so far. Solly Hull against St Albans, both of those have looked tremendous so far. And how about this one? Berkhamstead against Trinity. These two faced each other in the Schools Cup quarterfinals. Trinity won that one and went on to lift the Schools Cup last week. Berkhamstead, the Daily Mail trophy winners, could one of them go on to win the Vars? Well, what an elimination round game it is, that's for sure. Bristol Grammar School against Grammar School at Leeds, another elimination round game. Then we've got the next one here on RE2. Dollar Academy against Stowe, that's going to be massive. Epsom College against Felstead. George Watson's College against Gravesend Grammar. Hymer's College against Ravenswood. Morven College against St. Olaf's Grammar. Merkiston Castle against St. Peter's York. Norwich against Wallington County Grammar. And Millfield against Seavick College. Those are your elimination round games. We're about two thirds of the way through this one between Seaford College and Reed. Seaford College are playing absolutely beautifully. And Will Bowley is having the game of his life on a hat trick at the moment. He's got the ball now on to, I think it was Henry Boyle. Couldn't quite tell from my angle. Reeds, by the way, opened the scoring with some really dominant play. This is Henry Boyle now on the ball. Releases it down the left-hand side. It's going to be a fifth try for Seaford College. Oh, what a performance this is. Remember, every team that's got to this stage has played absolutely beautifully through the day had to top your group to get to this point so those that are here have been outstanding and yet Seaford College still are putting in this sort of performance it is hugely impressive conversion just drifts wide but with their fifth try of the game Seaford are sitting pretty Took a while for the ball to get back there, but we have the ball again and ready to go. And some more updates on results for you. Uppingham will be in the bars, my old school, would you believe it? Beating Bishop Wordsworth 19 12. Cardinal Newman, well, what a performance this was 35 5 against Queen Mary's College Basingstoke. Cardinal Newman will be in the vase, Queen Mary's will be in the bowl. Simon Langton, as we already said, a three to the through to the Vars after beating Gordon's 10-7. Royal Hospital School, they are a dark horse. Look out for them. They beat Aundel 35-7 in their elimination round game. They'll be heading through to the Vars groups tomorrow morning. And that's what's on offer for the winner of this game. It's the Vars groups tomorrow. So it'll be group stage quarterfinals, semi-final and final and that will be mirrored. The losers of this game will go into the bowl tournament which will be exactly the same format as the Vars tomorrow. And at the moment it's looking like it will be Seaford College in that Vars. Jealous. Oh, This boy gets through a shift, let me tell you. Bowley. Oh, he's pulling out all the magic tricks now. And uh, why not? Reeds looking to ship the ball right from one coast to the other. Now they come back against the grain, but they take it into contact. You don't want to do that against this Seaford team, and that's why you don't want to do that against this lot. They are fierce at the breakdown. Really, really intense performance from Seaford College. They cross for their sixth there. This is just outstanding stuff from Seaford College.
reads frustrated on the touchline. And you can see why. After a really promising start, they've just not quite clicked as they would have wanted to. And now it's another try for Seaford College. They are just capitalising now on mistakes. They've been so impressive all day of Seaford College. And with hardly any time left on the clock, you've got to think they've done the business here. Reads. Really working hard to make ground, and that's fantastic footwork there. But that man is over it again. Oh, he's so good over the ball, but Reeds do manage to get it back. And they're up a bit of a blind alley, but they get the offload away. And that offload is a thing of beauty. And away go Reeds, charging towards the line. They still believe. Across the line they go. Their second try of the game. Fantastic score. But it still looks like it's going to be Seaford going through as the Stowe players line up alongside me. They're up next against Dollar Academy. A massive Anglo-Scots clash, that one. And that's the final whistle. Seaford College are going to be going into the Vars groups tomorrow. Reeds miss out, but they'll be back tomorrow as well. They're over in the bowl. That's what awaits those that lose in these games. They go through to the bowl tomorrow morning. Bowl, bowl group stages. The winners, well, they're into the Vars group stages and a chance at the big prizes. Seaford College go through. Who's going to join them? Is it going to be Stowe? Is it going to be Dollar Academy? Well, we'll find out. Kickoff is just moments away. <laughs> Here we go then, Stowe against Dollar Academy, huge game, elimination round, who will be joining the other qualifiers in the Vars tomorrow and who will be in the bowl tomorrow? They've both done tremendously well to be here. It takes something special just to get this far, but it's Stowe on the charge early on and it's Pollock with a delicious offload to McParland. Oh, what a way to start from Stowe. Pollock to McParland, the Northampton Saints duo. And that is a superb try to kick things off here in the elimination round game. McParland, by the way, who's found time to be messaging us on Instagram with little clips and highlights of himself. It's quite impressive. There's not that much time in the day. But the young scrum halves managed it. And I'll tell you what, there's a highlight there. What a try that was. Created by Pollock, finished by McParland. Stowe, 7-0 up. Dollar, received the kickoff. Starting, weaving about, looking for the space, finding a little bit of space. The Scotsmen have been so impressive so far this season. Former school of John Barkley, of course. Former Scotland skipper. Stowe defence is big, though. As is the clear out from Dollar Academy, you can tell this. There's a pair of sides that have been playing at a really high level today. McParland almost, almost gathered it. He's going to get a yellow card, but if the ball hadn't touched the floor, it would have been a thing of beauty that really unlucky for McParland. Out of order. 
out to the board, no. Get on this board. Agenda. We won't stand for anymore. Dollar on the attack. Almost an intercept from Stowe. But instead, Dollar attack. They're charging through. But look at this cover. Look at this cover tackle. Oh, that is outstanding from Charlie Maxwell McDonald. The tackle of the day from Maxwell McDonald. Lives in Scotland. Determined to take his countrymen down, though. And Stowe have the turnover. And now they look to counter. They boot the ball long. There is space back there. It's a foot race. And it's looking like gonna be, it's going to be a Stowe win of that foot race. Jamie Annand collects the ball and across the line from one try line to the other. The try saving tackle from Maxwell McDonald. The chip through from Cowan. The turnover from Pollock. And the finish from Jamie Annand. That is a classic sevens try from Stowe School. So many parts to that. From the cover tackle to the turnover. The awareness to boot the ball through for the space. And then it was all about pace and a bit of power to get across the line. And that is a two, a two try lead. And of course all done with just six men as Archie McParland comes back onto the field. We'd almost forgotten that, such was the excitement. Stowe, kick long, Dollar. Well, they've looked tasty with the ball in hand and they could so easily have scored themselves but for the turnover and they're out to the gas man on the outside. And oh, what a clean pair of heels. I thought he was showing there, but he's hauled down brilliantly by Ewan Baker. And he gets the turnover too. And I tell you what, Ewan Baker's a popular man in the Stowe ranks. Plenty of praise he's getting from his teammates here on the sidelines. And Stowe, well, again, a crucial turnover when under pressure. And that's been the mark of them. Pollock, great offload onto Maxwell McDonald. Ball spilled, though, and Dollar just stab it through. They're doing anything they can to find a way through this defence. But look at the energy and work rate from the Northampton Saints open side. Henry Pollock. Maxwell McDonald gets the, sorry, McParland gets the offload away. And it's a try for Stowe, a third of the game. They are running things ragged out there. Stowe on fire. This is some performance from Stowe School. Three tries to nil, and we've not even reached half time. Dollar Academy, to be fair to them, have done little wrong. They've looked threatening with the ball in hand, but every time they've made a clean break, this Stowe defence has done a number on them and nicked the ball. Short delay while we retrieve the ball from the sidelines. Stowe. Take the ball at the line out and go charging forward. McParland picks up the drop ball. Sea of bodies on this touchline. Stowe have brought huge support with them for this game. Now they go dancing through the middle, searching, searching for a fourth try. Dollar Academy doing everything they can to keep out Stowe, but it may not quite be enough. An unbelievable bit of finishing in the corner. Couldn't quite see who it was from this angle. I'm sure those of you on the live stream 
can spot from that higher footing. Very helpfully told, Archie McParland is the try scorer. And McParland lands the touchline conversion and that sends us into the half-time break. Stower up, four tries to nil. They have been utterly, utterly magnificent in this. Dollar Academy, well, they've got some work to do, but they've been doing some good stuff. They've just found it so hard in defence. Sorry, in attack, rather, once they've broken through that Stowe defence because Stowe are over them like a rash on the line break. The work of the likes of Pollock and Maxwell McDonald at the breakdown has been utterly magnificent. And Dollar have got to find a way to get their men to the supporting cast as quickly as they can. Half time, Stowe lead four tries to nil in this elimination round game. And as we break for half time, just a chance to update you on uh, some of those other scores from the elimination round games. Abingdon have gone through with a 27 12 victory against Morgan College. RGS Newcastle have knocked out the holders. Bromsgrove, RGS Newcastle have been utterly brilliant all day. They've been racking up points like there's no tomorrow. And that showed in a brilliant 29 19 performance against the holders, Bromsgrove. So, Bromsgrove, the best they can hope for now is the bowl. Marlborough College, how about this for an elimination round performance? 50 points to seven against Eastbourne College. Well, Marlborough College, we've been talking about them all day. What an exciting team they have, and they have shown it in abundance. Same can be said for Tunbridge, who again put 50 on the board against Glen Armand College. 52 points to 17. That sends Tunbridge through into the Vars tomorrow. Queen Ethelberg has beat Stonyhurst 38-10. And Solly Hole beats St Albans, who people have been raving about today, 41-19. Here, though, on RE2, we have Stowe and Dollar Academy, and Stowe are in rampant form in this elimination round game. Both of these sides will be here tomorrow, but it's all about will you be here in the Vars or will you be here in the Bowl? And at the moment, it's looking like the Vars for Stowe and the Bowl for Dollar Academy. A long way to go yet, though. Anything can happen in the game of sevens. It only takes seconds to score a try. Stowe have rung the changes, though, but it's still huge ambition from them. Charging forward, they go. Oh, look at this run. That is astonishing. Ewan Baker, well, he already had one try. And he's got another to his neck with an absolutely outstanding bit of solo work from inside his own half. Everyone here calling for him to pass it and pass it and pass it. No need. Get the footwork out. Get the fend off. And off he goes on an almost length of the field effort for his, his side's fifth try in what is at the moment an absolutely outstanding performance. I keep saying it, but it truly is. Just a reminder that the under-15 girls plate final is the next game up here on RET. We're doing our best to work out who's in it. Um, information not travelling back and forth to us quite as quickly as one might hope. But we will find out the answer very shortly. As it is, Stowe versus Dollar at the moment is the game. And Stowe are five tries to heading to tomorrow's Vars kickoff hangs high got a bit lost in the chaos but Dollar Academy come away with it can they get a score delay on the pass and it's a step inside and then an offload great pace here from the number seven down the right hand side can Baker catch him Baker's going for him 
gets the tap tackle in, but I think across the try line, the referee agrees. Dollar Academy are on the score sheet for the first time in this elimination game. Unbelievable pace there from the Dollar open side. I thought Baker had him on the corner flagging. But Dollar Academy managed to streak away and get their first try of the game. Conversion drifts wide. And I have to say, I think I might be the only person in Rosslyn Park right now who's a little chilly now, out of nowhere. On the shady side of the ground, the rest of the ground basked in sunlight. Bit slow in getting the ball back, but Dollar have it now on the halfway line. Five tries to one down, they need some quick scores. Safely gathered by Stowe though. And Stowe getting the offloads in. Going this way and that. Maxwell McDonald showing real power. Gets the offload away. Really, really good work from Will Plessis. Played for Wales under 18 last week. And it's that sort of power and precision that gets him through. For his side sixth try of the game. Some tired bodies out there, everyone taking their time. Conversion landed. And I think we're going to see a slow trot back to halfway. Still a fair bit of time left in this one, though. Stowe, float one in. Referee not happy though. Stowe ahead of the kicker. Dollar. Oh, this is a tricky bit of footwork from the dollar number 11. Eventually hauled down. Ships it wide. And again, can they get across for their second? Hauled just short. Now they look to spread it. Big time to move it. But it's well closed down in defence from Stowe. Rushed up well to close the space. Dollar working oh so hard. But Stowe working equally hard in defence. But I think the referee... Well, the referee's awarded something. We're going to find out what soon. It's either a try or a penalty. It's looking like he's awarded a try. Well, it was a try for Dollar Academy. They worked pretty hard to get there, but it was exceptional defence from Stowe. And in all honesty, with this sort of scoreline, all they have to do in defence is eat up time. If the try is scored eventually, it doesn't really matter too much as long as the try is scored slowly. And that's exactly what happened there. The clock is ticking. Alright, sorry. Yeah. And here we go. We've got some of the uh, some of the Stowe players alongside me. Henry Pollock and what number two you got? Uh, lovely Jamie Annan. Two try scorers. How how this has been a pretty cracking performance. How have you enjoyed it, lads? Yeah, it's one to ask you boys, but a shift today. Um, yeah, going to go back in tomorrow and um, yeah, rest tonight. Um, ice bath recovery and then raring for raring to go tomorrow morning. Now you two played your part in what is one of the tries of the day, I think, as we just see a bit of action down at the far end. We had the great cover tackle and then we had the wonderful turnover from you. We had the, the kick through and then the chase down and then you got the finish at the end. Tell me about that try. That's a thing of beauty. I think it just it reflects all our efforts in the game and yeah, we can't knock our effort and oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll move on to tomorrow. Move on to tomorrow. 
Dollar Academy just probing for a third, but it's well gathered by Stowe. And there's a lot of space if they can move it. Getting those offloads off the deck. They're working hard. Stowe to get the ball off the deck. There's space if they can find it. They've got plenty of patience here. Placis just gets it. Maxwell McDonald gets his head down, pins back his ears, uses that powerful fend. Maxwell McDonald from his own try line. How about that? Well, we could be in for a new try of the day, couldn't we, lads? <laughs> Talk us through that one. Turnover. Oh, Charlie Maxwell McDonald, absolutely ecstatic. That is exceptionally well done by him. Um, after a long day in the office, you know, he still has the gas to finish off there. Um, just amazing, honestly, just one word, amazing. So I think, boys, we're going to be seeing you boys in the Vars tomorrow. Have a good day. Thank you. Have a good one, and we'll catch you later. That's the final whistle. A tremendous, tremendous performance from Stowe. Good to hear from a couple of their lads as well. They are excited because they are going through to the Vars group stage tomorrow morning. They are in contention, and I'll tell you what, they have got to be considered among the favourites after a performance like that. We'll be back with you on the mic very shortly with the girls' under-15 plate final. I'm going to trot off quickly to try and find out who's playing in that. Check, check, check. So you join us for the girls under 15 plate final. Kings of Wessex in orange against Bab Lake and King Henry VIII school in yellow. And I hope you can tell the difference on your screens because I can't quite with my eyes.
And away we go. The girls under 15 plate final. Kings of Wessex against Bab Lake and King Henry VIII school. These two joined forces during COVID. Bab Lake and King Henry VIII school in Coventry. Two great rival schools brought together. And I have fantastic news for you, which is that I have team cheats for both teams as away streaks Millie Moore, the number nine for Kings of Wessex. A wonderful, wonderful try for Millie Moore. Oh, she'll remember that one. It could well be Silverware coming to her team's way if they can hold on to that lead. What a fantastic start from Kings of Wessex. Millie Moore, what a two scrum halves in the Kings of Wessex squad. Conversion being deliberated over very carefully. Goes under the stick, so sadly it's tight trying to convert from behind those posts. Not a lot of space to get it done. But a 5-0 lead thanks to Millie Moore for Kings of Wessex. Kings of Wessex, by the way, coached by Chris Sandefour and Dan Lomax. Tremendous job they've done with the girls' programme there. This, remember, is the first ever under-15 girls' tournament here at Rosslyn Park, due to be played in 2020. But, of course, two COVID cancellations means that this is the first ever one. And away down the right-hand side go Bab Lake and King Henry. Can they get away? No. Brilliant tackle from Rosie Ellis-White. on Scarlet on the right wing for Bab Lake and King Henry. But streaking away they go and what a step it is from Daisy, the number 10. Danced in one, out of the other. But hauled down just short. Can she get across the line? No, she can't, but her teammate can. I can't quite make out who it is yet, but I'll let you know as soon as I spot her. Bab Lake and King Henry VIII responding in style to going behind with a fantastic try. The conversion landed. Bab Lake and King Henry VIII lead seven points to five. And I'm about, I hope, to be able to tell you who scored that try. I'm just waiting for her to turn her shoulder. Ponytail's in the way of the number. It's the number nine, Clarissa. Congratulations, Clarissa. Great finish. As I was saying, though, this is the first ever under-15 girls tournament here at Rosslyn Park. Really fantastic to see as they try and work to expand the girls' program to match the depth of the boys' program, uh, the boys' competition here at Rosslyn Park. Really, really leading to things in a fantastic way. Three girls' competitions now: the under-18s, the Acer and now the under 15s and the under 15s look like they are enjoying themselves out there a try apiece but it's bad Blake and king henry the eighth with the lead seven points to five as the successful snow squad walk behind us what a joy they've been to watch today no worries mate and it's a second try Kings of Wessex oh, she's absolutely shattered she's gone almost the length of the field for her side second try of the game what a fantastic effort Kings of Wessex well that's how you respond to a try from the penalty, they go fast. They work hard down that right-hand side. And it's the diminutive speedster on the right wing that makes the progress.
And I'll tell you the try scorer just as soon as she turns towards me. My eyesight clearly going in the fading sun. This is the number three, Sophie Wildblood. Fantastic play from Kings of Wessex. A really top response to conceding the try. Fighting back fast as Framlingham College trot past us here. Bespoke t-shirts for the event. Bab Lake and King Henry then back on the attack. Oh, wonderful hands, but it was a knock on in the process. A forward pass rather in the process. Nearly, nearly. Amy in the 20 shirt was almost away. Bit of a scrappy passage of play there. But we're in decent shape. In this under 15 girls plate final. If you ever wanted to know the difference between the boys rugby and the girls rugby, as Lutterworth walked past, no need to be sorry, don't worry. It's great to see you all out here. Lutterworth, trot, trotting past after a cracking day here at the Sevens. They've been superb. An enjoyable outing for them. But not quite as enjoyable as it was for King, Kings of Wessex and Bab Lake and King Henry VIII school. Those two schools are here on the field in this under 15 plate final in the girls' competition. Kings of Wessex have the lead. Bab Lake defending against the Kings of Wessex scrum on the 22. They go the long way round and they go the long way round. Oh, so well. The big play from Millie Moore. She scored first early on and she scored a second here. Picking up off the base on that classic scrum half arc and just rounding the defence, showing them a clean set of heels, getting herself underneath the sticks for her team's third try of the game. She's waving her hand, asking for water, and quite right too. She is putting in a shift, and that's half time. Kings of Wessex lead. Three tries to one against Bab Lake and King Henry VIII school. The under 15 girls plate final, a big, big half time coming up. Seven minutes left to play when the whistle restarts things.
So we're about ready for the second half in the under 15 girls plate final here at the Rosslyn Park HSBC National School Sevens. The final game on RE2 today. As it stands, it's Kings of Wessex that are leading three tries to one. Kings of Wessex on the left hand side of your screen in the orange shirts. Bab Lake and King Henry VIII on the right hand side in the yellow and in possession as they search to get back into this one and they hoof it downfield. It's a big charge down. Everyone chasing back, ball bobbling and weaving, just about regathered. I think it was Sophie Wildblood that got there for Kings of Wessex who are now trying to charge around the outside. Streaking away in their own half, fending, fending again. Can they get the ball away? Oh, the offload is delicious. Sophia Dolceza is going to score. She's streaking away. The game is up. She can go. She can waltz home. The try is scored. Kings of Wessex from deep inside their own half. Charge down the field. And Sophia Dolceza. Normally a fullback finds herself in the wide channel and crossing the whitewash. It's brilliant, brilliant try from Kings of Wessex. Short delay while we make a couple of subs. Handing the ball over there, Millie Moore, the number nine for Kings of Wessex. Oh, what a couple of tries she's had. Absolutely outstanding. Has Millie Moore been one of the smallest on the pitch? But playing like one of the biggest. Kicked off then and gathered. by Daisy, I think that was. Ball drifts wide. Out now to Sophie in the number 11 shirt, back in to 17, Otty, and now to Amy on the switch. Back to Daisy. Daisy with the delicious offload. It's just bobbled forward, has it? No referee says play on. So Otty will go charging in. Takes it to contact, offloaded off the deck. The ball being kept alive. Otty takes it in again. She's had her hands on this ball about five or six times in this phase of possession, but it's ripped from her on the floor. And guess who it was? Millie Moore. My goodness, what a game she's having. As Kings of Wessex. Look to make ground. Amelia Mardwell it was with the initial break and now they get it wide. I think it's Jazz Lyons on the left wing. She's trying to go right round the outside. What's going to go first, legs or lungs? Well, it's not going to be either for her. She's going to get there all the way. Wonderful, wonderful work from Jazz Lyons. She went the long way round. A huge arcing run. But in the end, she had the fitness and she had the pace to get the whole way round. The strength to evade the tackle. And Kings of Wessex, well, things are looking pretty rosy for them right now. A huge thank you to both these sides, by the way, for providing us with team sheets. It makes a huge difference for the experience we can provide. Fantastic work from Kings of Wessex in this final, though. They have been absolutely astonishing. Kings of Wessex then to kick things off. 
made a couple of changes. Tricky one to gather that, a low scudder. But it's taken well by Bab Lake and King Henry. Ball spilled everywhere. It's bobbing and weaving. Eventually it comes to a standstill on the floor. And it's popped off the floor. Both sides working really hard to play the ball off the deck. And then away into a bit of space. Went Rosie Ellis White. And now Amelia Mardwell takes it into contact. The ball wrestled free by Katie Radford. And she's got herself across the line, has she? She hasn't, no, just spilled. So it'll be in a scrum down. Bab Lake and King Henry ball. Kings of Wessex ball, in fact. Five metre scrum. Can they get another try? They've been absolutely rampant early on. Millie Moore. Oh, I thought she was going to get her hat trick. But instead, she passed it. And then it was a wonderful, wonderful tackle from Bab Lake and King Henry. And they absolutely hoof it downfield. It's a foot race to catch it. Rosie Ellis White, I think, is going to win it for Kings of Wessex. She picks it up and just hoofs it back. And now it's up to the referee to try and work out who is and isn't onside. And that is a tricky task. It has to be said, pass for it goes forward and perhaps that digs him out of a hole of trying to work exactly who was and was not onside there because it was a minefield. Breathless passage of play. Bringing us towards an end of an absolutely breathless day of action here at the Rosslyn Park HSBC National School Sevens. 10 a.m. start, a game every 20 minutes. The whole of RE1 and RE2 live streamed. It's been absolutely fantastic. Glorious sunshine all day. Kings of Wessex, I don't think want it to end though. They're enjoying themselves out, out here so much, but it's Bab Lake and King Henry that are in possession and working really, really hard. Trundling through the middle. They found a route to some easy yardage, but I think we've got a bit of an injury, so we'll have a bit of a break in play. And the referee, in fact, decides that is that. Kings of Wessex are your under 15 girls plate champions here at the Rosslyn Park HSBC National School Sevens. A fantastic performance in the final from them. Scrum half Millie Moore for my money was the player of the match. We've got a couple of nasty knocks on the field just as things close out. A really, a real shame of a way for things to end on the pitch because for the 14 minutes prior, Kings of Wessex had been absolutely fantastic. Fortunately, there is a superb medical team here at the Rosslyn Park HSBC National School Sevens in the form of our partners at Next Gen 15 return to play. And their medical Providers are doing a great job here and come onto the pitch to help the injured girls out. Kings of Wessex then. 
your under 15 girls plate champions closing off a magnificent day of rugby here at the Rosson Park HSBC National School Sevens. We will be back again tomorrow. Another 10 o'clock start. It's the Vars and Bowl day two. And it's the Colts day one. A big, big day is Wednesday at the Nationals. Here on day two, it's time for me to say goodbye and we'll see you tomorrow congratulations to kings of wessex girls under 15 plate champions do catch the cup final over on re1